Hello, welcome to this video on how to design original torsion lace patterns. In four lessons, we will make pattern stamps, generate a design, turn that into a lace pattern and solve problems. In this third lesson, we will turn our stamped pattern into a versatile set of lace patterns. Lesson 3 from Pattern to Design Turning your pattern into a lace design The process we'll look at includes getting prepared, creating a new pattern, designing a square, making something useful and dotting the final pattern. All with the aim of creating patterns to fit with our lives. Getting prepared Materials you will need where to find torsion grids, learning some basic skills and looking at pattern essentials. In this lesson, you will need your stamped design, printed torsion grids, a soft pencil, eraser, correcting fluid, tracing paper, low tack tape, fine liner pens and a mirror tile. Finding torsion grids. Plot a dot grid sheets for this lesson can be downloaded from contemporarylace.com. Note these are A4, but the pattern examples grow to A3. You can either join A4 sheets together or buy A3 sheets from lacebobbins.com. To design our lace pattern, we need to equip ourselves with some basic skills. If you have not designed before, you can learn a lot by redrafting a pattern that you have made into lace in the past. Here I've gone back to a piece of lace I made a long time ago. To redraft your pattern, first count the number of pinholes along each shape and then block them in on the grid, drawing dot to dot. Draw the edging freehand and then add the foot side. Then compare it with the original pattern. This is from the book that I published 35 years ago and adjust as necessary. Pattern components. A typical torsion pattern will include a basic repeat, our design motif, a repeating pattern, Corner motifs, and a turnover to reverse the flow of the pattern. Creating a new pattern. Now we will show how to start with a stamp design, transferring this onto a grid, develop motifs, a corner, a turnover, and end up with a quarter of your pattern. From your collection, choose the stamped pattern that you like best. Are there some strong features that could be particularly useful? The dots and loops here might be enough. We start here by drawing the dot as a small diamond and adding a horizontal guideline. We now add a loop, but how big? So another diamond would keep the same proportion, and then we can take the loop around it. It may be difficult to know where to proceed, so try starting another part of the pattern. You can now see where to place the next diamond and how the design will progress, finishing off the bottom loop and turning the top loop round the new diamond and adding another. Finally, the basic shape is aligned to the grid. Draw several motifs to fully appreciate the pattern.
Keep your designs as narrow as you can. The wider the pattern, the more bobbins you will need. Try to keep your patterns easy to make. The corner. Use a mirror to decide which part of the pattern would look good as a corner. I think it will work here, but I'm not going to use the lower block. So the corner has consequences because the pattern reflects at the corner. This reverses the flow of the repeat pattern, so we now need a turnover. The turnover. Slide your mirror along the pattern to gauge the best place to reverse it. The pattern reflects quite well here. Draw the other side of the turnover so that the pattern runs in the opposite direction. Now we can put the components together to make a quarter or corner of the design. Start with your shape positioned so that you have space to turn it into a corner. Add the corner fold guidelines. This is where you turn the pillow as you go round the corner. And mirror your shape across the diagonal guidelines. Add turnover guidelines. and the larger diamond from the turnover. So this is our basic corner design. We can now fill out the design by adding or removing motifs, changing the shape and width of trails or adding texture stitches. We can then explore our edging before realizing a complete square. Starting with our basic corner, we can fill the actual corner itself with extra diamonds aligned with the ones we already have, and then add diamonds in the center. Embellish diamonds with decorative trails. In the centre I've decided to enclose the whole of the centre. Add variety by changing the width of trails. So instead of having them all over four dots, I've put the two centre ones in over three dots. and replace the inner squares with spiders. And now we're adding symbols from rose ground texture stitches, but you can use many other texture stitches. There are books full of them. And don't forget the turnover when you're adding them round the edge. And here adding Scandinavian ground in the centre. Now we can calculate an edging. And here are two options, but leave through all your books of Torshan and you can find many others. And then we can draw in the working lines for the trails. Now we can produce a complete pattern 
by copying and rotating our corner three times more. So this is the trial square pattern completed on A3 paper, but I did run out of space for an edging. Making something useful. Now we have a basic pattern, let's see how we can use it to make something useful. Our lace project will take new life when we discover a real need for it. Here, an IKEA table tray offered inspiration. And I also had a square cushion pad. The tray was 34 and a half centimeters deep and the cushion 35 centimeters squared. So a 34 centimeter pattern extended sideways for the tray could be ideal. So we need to adapt the original square to fit. That needed to be wider. So we found a new turnover motif with a mirror. And the odd long pattern used more of the repeat pattern, but with a different turnover. We only need to design half of the square. And then join two photocopies to fit the cushion. And we only need to design half of the tray cloth. because two joined photocopies will fit the tray. Second thoughts, a tray could end up as a rather large project. Perhaps just the edge pattern could be mounted on cloth. We could have used the whole of the original pattern This would give a different repeating pattern. Here positioned over a corner and with lines drawn in to examine different turnovers. The lines of diamonds in the other motif could set up a whole new range of patterns. And here it is, photocopied and joined. Dotting the pattern. Now that we have drafted the pattern by blocking it in on the grid, we can dot the pattern onto tracing paper. Use just one swift dab for each dot. Here I'm using a 0.5 pen. But it did come in, in an assorted pack, so I'm going to use thinner ones for what could be half-stitch trails. And to draw in the rose ground. You chase yourself round a pattern. So that worker will become a passive and then this one will go all the way across. And here I'm using a thicker pen for what might be whole stitch blocks.
we will look at alternatives and solving practical problems in Lesson 4. Useful books include Pattern Design for Torsion Lace, Drafting Torsion Lace Patterns, An Introduction to Bobbin Lace Making, and Discover, Explore, Master Torsion.